Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to an updated mod spotlight for Mistcraft. Oh boy, Mistcraft has changed just a little bit, and it even has its own new block called the Ink Mixer, which you're going to need to use uh, to generate all your ages. Lots of people who have gotten their hands on the new version of Mistcraft already have been asking me and XCompWiz for a uh, updated mod spotlight, so of course, here it is. Mistcraft, of course, being one of my favorite mods, it adds all kinds of cool stuff. You guys have seen my spotlights before, but I need to jump into the new mechanics that the Ink Mixer brings you, because it makes things a little bit different, and I love all the new changes that have been implemented. So, let's get started. Alright, like I said, first things first. One of the major changes part of Mistcraft is the ink mixer, which requires a little bit of wood, some smooth stone, and a glass bottle. Not a big deal. Place that down in the world. Now, this is a very important block. You're going to need two things for your ink mixer. And these ink mixers will make for you the link panels that are now required for both descriptive and linking books. Let's take a look. First off, to make a linking panel, add some ink vials on the left, and it'll use one of those ink vials up and dump the empty one on the right. Notice that the ink mixer now has a bunch of ink in the middle. Cool. Now to make a link page, all you gotta do is drop a piece of paper on the bottom left, and you'll see that a link panel is now available on the right, and when you pull it out, boom, it's gonna use up the liquid in the internal bit here and use another ink vial to fill it up. So one ink vial per link panel. And uh, once you've got a link panel, this thing is very important and now required for crafting both descriptive and linking books. Let's take a look. So, first off, how to craft a linking book. Well, now there's a slightly different mechanic. You need a piece of leather to bind the link panel, and all you need is the link panel and the leather to create an unlinked linking book, okay? So this is the linking book in the age that you can jump to and uh, return to the exact location. In order to set your home point, simply place it on your hotbar and right-click it. Now it's turned into the green linking book that links to the overworld, the one that we all know and love. So, slightly different mechanics now. No longer is the link book uh, uh, automatically made on creation, you actually have to right click it in order to set your home coordinates. And that's actually pretty nice because it allows you to create a bunch of link books ahead of time and then just bring them with you to set the destinations wherever you want. So that's a really cool change and one that I'm pretty excited about. Now let's get ourselves another link panel and show you guys about descriptive books. No longer um, in the book binder can you just go ahead and throw some leather in here and put any random page in to get yourself uh, what you want. You actually need to place the link panel as the very first page in the book. Now a link panel by itself will give you a random descriptive book. However, if you want to add your own custom modifiers, it works exactly the same as before. Go get yourself a notebook, put some pages in it, throw the pages in here, and then set down exactly how you want your age to be described. But the very most important thing is you must use the um, link book panel page here as your first page in the book. Um, otherwise you won't get a descriptive book over on the left. So if we were to, for example, go ahead and get some pages. So I didn't write a full book here, I just got, you know, the basics going on. Uh, I just set up just the biomes. So I said, you know, give me these four biomes and anything else you want. Uh, note now that when I go ahead and place the notebook in here, it's not giving me the option to create the descriptive book, no. First you have to place your link panel, and then you place your books and your pages. And now you've got a descriptive book, which should work to create exactly the biomes that we want. And if we flip through the pages, you'll see that we get the Brushland biome, the Blessed Bog. I just picked random biomes here. And then the Medium Biomes page was the last one pretty important step. Um, now the other thing to note about biomes specifically is that they now are modifiers. In the past you've always seen me put the um, pages uh, for biomes like the mesa biome and the birch biome preceding the medium biomes. Um, I treated them like modifiers in the past even though they technically weren't. So you could have in the past put them wherever you want. Well now they are modifiers to the biome page here so you must put them uh, preceding. So just like any other modifier in Miscraft, you have to put your uh, biome pages before the medium biomes. It's a modifier and it will modify that page. Now you might be thinking to yourself, hey Direwolf, this seems like a rather boring and pointless extra step. Why are you making me do this silly ink panel and ink files and this mixer thing? It sounds boring and stupid. Why? 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 Don't worry, there's a very good reason. Because you can modify your linking books using certain modifiers for your link panels. Let's take a look. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and fill up the uh, container here, alright? Uh, what I'm going to do before I choose my link book is I'm going to go ahead and place an enderpearl in here. Boom. Notice that now the ink panel is red, okay? And it's alternating between red and black and green. 
cool. What's this mean? Well, different items in the game have different mechanics that you can add to your linking panels, and each item uh, adds a small chance. Some might add more than others to different effects, and there's a bunch of different effects you can add to your link books. Some of them you've seen in the past, and there's a couple new ones. All right, so for example, uh, in this case, the red color is the disarm color, which means if I use the linking book and the red color is the one that's chosen, it will disarm me, causing all my items to drop on the ground. Now, the green one is the intralinking color, so that's going to cause this book to be an intralinking book, which means I can use the link book to teleport between locations in the same world. I don't have to jump from one world to the other. However, why is it flashing? Well, the reason is because it's showing you the likely chance of a certain effect going on the uh, book here. So right now, black means it's just going to be a normal link panel. Green means it's going to be an intralinking, and red means it's going to be a disarm. And the length of the color staying on the screen shows you the relative chance. So right now, it looks like it's a roughly even chance uh, between green, red, and black. Black might be a little bit longer of a delay between the green and red. Now, if I want to increase that chance, I can add another item to it. Boom, like that. Now, red, you'll notice, is staying longer, it looks like. Yes, and green is also staying a little bit longer. Now, are we going to still have some black in there? No. So there's a pretty good chance that we'll get, um, at this point, uh, both uh, either an intralinking or... Uh, disarming or both as a matter of fact and you can keep adding items here to increase your chances so I just bumped a few more ender pearls in there right so green looks like it's staying for a really long time yeah, a really long time. And red is staying for a very short time, which means we have a really good chance at this point of getting an interlinking book. So let's go ahead and put our piece of paper in and we'll pull out our link panel. Now I'll uh, give it a few seconds for it to catch up. Oh, looks like we got both. So this link panel turned into an interlinking and a disarming book, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, use some leather here. I should have some nearby. And I'm going to go ahead and combine these two together, okay? So interlinking, disarm, linking book, I'm going to bind myself right here. Cool? Now if I'm over here and I right-click, interlinking. Ta-da! All my stuff fell on the ground because it was a disarming book, and it did allow me to teleport within the same world because it's an interlinking book, okay? So your goal here is to go ahead and, uh, you know, play around with these. Go ahead and try to get yourself a pretty good page combination. So let's go ahead and try this again. Now there's a bunch of different items you can use. For example, I can use feathers, which I happen to know. Uh, feathers gives you the maintain momentum symbol, and that, let's see what we get there. So just right click it in there, is the blue color. So by adding the maintain momentum, that is the effect that allows you to maintain your momentum when you're traveling through a portal. So if you're using like, um, you know, a, a portal hooked up to some kind of uh, momentum system, like uh, if you're running through the portal, you'll maintain your momentum as you land in the age. Um, that's, you know, I think the uh, tip on the wiki says, now you're thinking with portals. So that should give you an idea. Uh, your other option uh, here is clay. And what clay does is it gives you a small plans for the generate platform effect. Let's see. Uh, generate platform, regardless of what happens in the world. There it is. It's a grayish kind of color. It will always generate a one by one by one platform under the spawn location. So regardless of uh, you know what kind of world it is, usually it generates a three by three. But in this case, it'll always generate a one by one, regardless of what's going on. Uh, so you've got the disarm symbol, you've got generate platform, you've got interlinking, you've got maintain momentum. Those are the main four that you can get in there for now. Unfortunately, there's no following just yet, but I'm sure it's something that he's working on and will be happening pretty soon. So the following page, not in there yet, but it's on its way. And finally, you can also add uh, using black dye or an ink sack. Uh, you can go ahead and add the clear modifiers uh, thing here. So you can see here we're adding it, and now we're, we're, we're just jumping between all kinds of uh, different colors. Clear modifiers being a slightly lighter color, almost white. Uh, what that does is apply the clear modifier symbol, which helps to clear away any modifiers. So you can see it's real quick. It's staying on white a lot. Let's go ahead and write this here, and... Yes, looks like we uh, probably got unlucky there and didn't get anything. So there is a chance. So it's all chance-based. Okay, the longer the color stays on the screen, the higher the chance for that color being applied. Uh, but it doesn't have to be exclusive. Like you saw, I got a link book that is, um, you know, disarming and following, or uh, disarming and interlinking. So those are the ways that you can mess with the ink to have different cool effects. Now there's a few other new symbols that I want to show you guys. There's actually a, a couple new symbols, but one that I'm really excited about, and I'm going to show you why in a minute, is down here somewhere. Let's see. Let's get to the G's. Uh, yes. Here it is. 
It's called grass color. That's right, we've got a grass color. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a pretty nifty thing. There's actually a couple of them. Uh, you also have foliage color. So it should be up here somewhere. Uh, let's see, foliage color. That's gonna be the color of the leaves. So now you can modify the leaves and grass color. Oh, I'm kind of excited about this. I'm gonna try it out. All right, guys, let's take a look at this age that I just wrote. Oh, look at this. Pretty orange sky. Got myself some red grass. How cool does that look? Looks like we also happen to got uh, some uh, nether quartz tendrils running through this age. No big deal, though. Um, but, yeah, pretty cool. So you can see if, uh, you know, you do get the vanilla biomes. Looks like I got also a... Um, uh, a biome from uh, the Twilight Forest in this age, so you can, uh, you know, see that that one stayed green, but in the vanilla biome that I'm in, it definitely gave me some red grass. And we've also got, I made white trees, so uh, that kind of replicates the silver trees, and, uh, you know, that looks pretty cool. So, that's the foliage color adjuster right there. It's, uh, it's vanilla trees. It just, you know, changes the foliage to go from green to whatever color symbol modifier you give it. And the grass color here is adjustable by colors as well. So you can see that we got this nifty little red grass. You can make it kind of whatever color you want. How awesome is that? I love it. I am really going to have a lot of fun with these modifiers with the, with, with the different symbols. So just a few other uh, symbol changes I want to mention to you guys, and then we're going to have to uh, wrap up the episode here. Uh, let's take a look at lakes. Uh, we've got different types of lakes. We've got regular lakes like this, and then we've also got, I believe it's underground lakes is what it's called. Um, and this replaces what used to be lava and water lakes. And these are now modifiable with almost any kind of uh, liquid. So as more liquids get added to the modifier system, you'll be able to modify your lakes with lava or water or whatever you want. Um, another change to modifiers is the crystal formation. So in the past, you used to just have glowstone crystal formations, and then you had crystals. Well, now there's crystal formations. Let's see if I can find it in here. Uh, crystals, where are you at? There you go, crystal formations. It doesn't have a symbol just yet, but then you can modify this with glowstone crystals or all kinds of other cool stuff like nether quartz and, uh, you know, the, the crystals from Mistcraft. So those are some of the options for modifications there. So there's some modification tweaks that went into this. The ability to make uh, different uh, colors of the grass and trees is pretty awesome. I'm pretty thrilled with that change. I mean, dude, I love this world that I just created here, and it wasn't even perfect. Once I tweak this a little bit, I think we could have a really nice-looking dimension. Um, and we've also of course got the uh, you know color changes here now if you want a full list of which items you can place in here and what uh, kind of different things you'll get from them uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link to the um, the, the ink page on the wiki for Mistcraft in the description of this video so you can see a list of all the different uh, items that can be added and what effects they'll give uh, now future changes I think um, you know he's going to have a couple other cool things going on one other thing that changed with regards to world generation is he added a whole system um, system of adding symbols. So if your age doesn't have enough symbols in the past, it would force that to uh, equal uh, instability. So if you forgot to give it, for example, um, a weather symbol, you would instantly get instability. That's no longer the case. However, it will randomly choose a weather symbol. So if you forget to give it one, you might wind up with something like eternal storm or something bad like that. Um, and it can also add some other things randomly. And if it does happen to add things randomly, it'll, uh, you know, potentially have instability. So for example, if it adds tendrils to the world and it adds um, nether uh, quartz tendrils like this one did, you're going to have a little bit of instability, uh, which is why you can see I've got the hunger effect there. It's because the, the nether tendrils are adding instability to this age because I didn't write it uh, you know, complicated enough. It was just kind of a basic and boring age. So that's what that was all about. Um, so now, slight changes to age generation is that ages will kind of fill in their own symbols if it's missing any, uh, you know, instead of just adding instability right off the bat. And with that, guys, I think we're ready to wrap up the Mistcraft Spotlight. So definitely hope you enjoyed checking out the uh, really cool ink system that was added. I'm pretty happy with this change because it allows you to start making intra-age linking books again. Uh, like I said, following books will be coming eventually in a future update. It may not be ink-related, but it might be related to something else. I'm not going to let you know about what it is just yet. XCompWiz did give me a little hip at to what it's going to be. You guys all have to wait and see. All right, guys, this is Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy.